Hi everyone, a little bit of a video for you today. Not a full review on these two, just some thoughts and musings. Not showing you my face because I've had a reaction. I've had a, quite an unpleasant skin reaction. My face is blotchy and kind of spotty and itchy and dry and you just don't need to see that right now. So today's a mini review over for you is on these two fragrances here from the house of Affinescence. Affinescence are a niche brand. Perfumes are very expensive. They sell 100 ml bottles for £300, but they have just started selling 50 ml for £150. And you can get samples at Joe Voy in London. So you can order samples online. And they also do a discovery set. Affinescence on their own website do a discovery set of all their fragrances for, I think it's, it was either 25 pounds or 25 euros, and you get a discount towards a full bottle. So I'm gonna give them props for that, thumbs up for that, but unfortunately, it's all downhill from now on. So Affinescence fragrances are basically base note fragrances. They are designed to just be built around base notes. And as such, they're not really full perfumes. I think you're supposed to layer them underneath other things. So first of all, I see a huge flaw here. It's £300 for a bottle of perfume and it's not a complete perfume. That's my understanding. Maybe I've got it slightly wrong, but I really do not get that value for money. No, not really very good. Okay, so let's move on. So I've tried these perfumes a couple of times across several months. I've had these samples for several months and I was expecting to love them. I loved the sound of them, the notes sounded so beautiful. So if we start with the lighter one, that's the Vigny Benjoin or uh, Benzoin. I don't know how you pronounce the J in there, but they, they clearly mean Benzoin, but I think it can be spelt a couple of ways. So sorry if I'm saying it incorrectly. Vigny Benjoin. I love vanilla, I love Benzoin. I expected to love this fragrance or at least like it quite a lot. Unfortunately, it's a very flat fragrance and I guess that's because it's built up of base notes. I actually don't get much of the vanilla in here. To me, it's very almondy. I think there's heliotrope in here. Heliotrope, when it's in a high dose, I can find slightly annoying. Heliotrope has an almond smell, kind of almond floral smell, but really it is like an almond, but it's a little, I don't know, a little screechy, I think. Well, I like it, but I like it in small doses and I feel like I can smell it in here. I could be wrong. There is tonka in here. Tonka can also give almond-like facets, but to me, this is a powdery almond scent, mostly, first and foremost. Yes, I can understand there's a bit of tonka in here, but it doesn't give you that voluptuous, full tonka bean experience. It just gives you a slightly almond-like, maybe slightly spicy element. It's slightly clean, almost soapy smelling musky and very flat very one-dimensional there just isn't any anything here giving it any depth any voluptuousness any curves it's flat as it's absolutely flat linear it doesn't do anything it doesn't change it's just a powdery flat almond Mostly almond scent, really. Even the vanilla, I don't really get it too much. Yes, there's a sweetness here. I feel like the vanilla is in quite a small dose and actually the whatever it is giving it the almond feel, whether it be the tonka or heliotrope. Heliotrope is not a listed note, by the way. That is the major player with some musk and a little bit of cleanliness. And that's it, maybe. The, maybe the benzoin's adding that powderiness, but this is a very one dimensional fragrance. I would not be happy to wear this on its own. 
and I wouldn't be happy to pay £300 to have to layer it under something else. That's just my personal experience and my personal feelings. You may well feel slightly differently and don't just take my word for it. They can be sampled very cheaply from Joe Voy. So if it's something that's interested, interesting to you, don't let me put you off here. But for me, it is quite a disappointment. Now the Santal Basmati does fare much better in my opinion. So of course this is a sandalwood fragrance and it says it's got Mysore essence, Basmati rice, patchouli iris and cashmirin. This has more presence so Regarding the other one, the vanilla one is quite light, really light. I can smell it, but it's not really a projector. This has a lot more presence. A little bit of a spiciness, which is really pleasant. Maybe a, like a bit like a cardamom. Um, a tiny bit of sharpness to that spiciness, but very pleasant. The rice note is lovely. It's a flavoured rice to me. It's not just plain rice, maybe a spiced rice as well. A touch of sweetness in here. Sandalwood isn't mega strong. And in combination with everything else, it, it to me is not as big a player as I would expect from a fragrance with it, Santal in the name. It has kind of a doughy bread-like scent to it. It's musky again and a little bit powdery probably from the iris there's a richness to this is a voluptuousness that is completely lacking in the vanille benzoin but the downside is that this one is also very linear in that it really doesn't change it doesn't do anything it just gently fades away and to me that's simply not good enough for the price point if linear fragrances don't bother you if you are happy to have a fragrance that smells the same all the way through then give this one a go you may well like it if you like a a slightly spicy slightly gourmand I'd actually say this is more gourmand than the vanilla one in my opinion I think the the almond note in this vanilla one is actually quite inedible. It's quite, I guess, chemical really, not foody at all. Whereas this does smell, it smells bready, it smells ricey, it smells spicy. It doesn't smell like a sweet treat, but it also doesn't smell too savoury. It's somewhere just in the middle. So I think this one's really pleasant, but as I say, it's very linear. So that's it, they're my thoughts on these two fragrances. I hope they were useful and I do recommend sampling them yourself if you have any interest. Just be aware that they are quite linear and they're not really complete perfumes. I'm used to smelling things from Francesca Bianchi, Papillon Perfumery, Tioni Reinfeld, voluptuous, full, rich, highly nuanced journeys of fragrances. And I guess I've been spoiled by those. And also, I'm very aware of the price point. Those fragrances are a lot more affordable than these. So for me, the value just isn't there. And that's it. I will update in the description box the longevity that I got from these. I'm still wearing them at the moment. So I can't tell you right now, and I can't remember that from the last time I wore them. So I will update that information in the description box. Hope that's okay with you, and I will see you in another video.